hope that's not the whole talk, but... <laughs> so I want to thank the meeting organizers for this opportunity to speak to you today on what is becoming a very intriguing um, story in the colorectal and endometrial cancer. As you've heard from several of the other speakers during this uh, symposium, uh, we of us who are studying uh, mutations kind of have a Goldilocks principle where uh, we don't want too few mutations because we can't uh, discern what's broken. But on the other hand, if we have too many mutations, uh, the background rates go way up and it's then very difficult to discern which mutations are causing a disease. So this is going to be a story about uh, of the ultra high mutation rate where it's very difficult to uh, tell uh, from one uh, patient to another which are the driver genes, but uh, the uh, polymerase that may be underlying that is uh, turning out to be very interesting. So um, let's see. Okay. So uh, I'll pick up where we had left off with the marker paper of the colorectal cancer, where uh, we're showing mutation frequencies here. The blue line are the frequencies of uh, non-synonymous mutations. And um, uh, you can see that most of the patients have a low rate between 1 and 10 mutations per megabase. They're microsatellite stable. And then there's another group of patients that are recognized as hypermutated that have uh, also microsatellite instability, as indicated down on the uh, uh, panel uh, below. The microsatellite instability is associated with a very high rate of, uh, of MLH1 silencing uh, through uh, CPG island methylation. Uh, and what we observed was that there is a uh, small group of patients with the highest mutation rates. These are mutation rates greater than 100 uh, per megabase that uh, did not have microsatellite instability and did not have MLH1 silencing apparent. And in fact, uh, the MLH1 uh, track up here shows that they weren't even mutated in MLH1. And interestingly, they all had uh, mutations in the polymerase E. And uh, so polymerase E is one of the two major replicative enzymes that replicates the genome at S phase. And uh, this came to our attention, uh, and we dubbed these ultra-mutated. This uh, came to our attention uh, when we looked at all of the mismatch repair systems uh, across these patients, and what's shown here are the different groupings of uh, DNA repair uh, genes. The green are uh, mutation frequencies in patients with greater than 100 mutations per megabase, the ultra-mutated. The red are the hyper-mutated microsatellite instable, and the blue are uh, bars represent uh, the, the low mutation rate patients. And Generally, you can see that all of the gene or many of the genes are increasing in mutation frequency as you go to these ultra high mutation rate. Um, uh, however, interestingly, not all genes show that trend. In particular, uh, this blue bar here is p53, whose mutation rate actually goes down uh, as you go to higher mutation frequency. So interestingly, in the polymerases, there was a single gene that was mutated in all of them. And however, a single gene uh, mutated in 100% where n equals 6 is not all that much to write home about. But when we looked at the location of those mutations in the uh, polymerase, we saw that they clustered mainly in the exonuclease domain. Now, all of these mutations are only from the uh, uh, ultra-mutated patients, and so there are more than six here, and that's because some of these patients are mutated multiple times. And what was 
<clears throat> really intriguing was not only the clustering in the exonuclease domain, but the fact that S459F had been seen twice. And <clears throat> as this was coming together, a paper came out from Japan uh, by uh, Yoshida and colleagues where they had discovered in a single patient the F367S uh, mutation, and so uh, which had also been seen in this study. So this recurrence at uh, these two sites in, in such a small data set seemed strongly suggestive. But again, with n equals 6, we had a very hard sell here. So uh, we had about 300 more patients to go in the colorectal project overall. And so we went back to sequencing, hope, hoping that we would see more of these. And so <clears throat> let me just mention why um, uh, Yoshida referred to this in the title of that paper as the proofreading function. Uh, these polymerases have been studied for the last uh, two or three decades in great detail. And this shows the results of some experiments with the T4 polymerase. And in the exonuclease domain of this polymerase, mutations are known to cause a very high rate of, uh, of mutation. And uh, this mutator phenotype, as it's become called, has been seen in bacteria, now in yeast, it's been studied extensively. Uh, interestingly, mutations in the polymerase domain over here sometimes actually improve the fidelity of the polymerase. And it's thought that the polymerase has to slow down uh, when the polymerase domain is mutated, and that lets the exonuclease domain operate more efficiently. So what you have here is something like a modern day word processor where you're typing in Microsoft Word and you mistype a letter and push the space bar and the, uh, uh, the uh, error is corrected. Um, so um, we can also look at recent experiments in mice where the exonuclease domain has been mutated and uh, uh, knocked out in mice. These mice are viable and they die quickly. Here is a polymerase E homozygous mutant. Uh, compared to the wild type, they die much faster and they're dying of cancer. Um, the uh, pole D1, which is the sister polymerase of pole E, also has a very high rate of death. These are also dying of cancer. And elsewhere in this study, they showed that these uh, mice had a mutator phenotype. So uh, with all this uh, together, we were very excited about this and went on sequencing. And this now shows the results of sequencing across 500 patients in colorectal cancer. And you can see that we have replicated mutations in sites we saw previously at P286R uh, with a variety of different amino acids at that position, V411L. Uh, uh, here is the F367S, which we haven't seen again. Uh, uh, and then uh, the S459F, uh, which uh, has not replicated. So our colleagues at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering, who were working on this with us, also worked uh, on the endometrial paper where, uh, or the endometrial project, where they also have microsatellite in stable uh, patients with hypermutator phenotypes. And so they were able to quickly confirm that this same phenomenon occurs in the endometrial cancer. So here you see uh, replication of P286R and V411L. Uh, across their patients, and these patients have the same uh, hypermutated, uh, ultramutated phenotype. In addition, these ultramutated uh, patients show a very dramatic skewing in the relative frequencies of uh, CA mutation relative to the hyper and the low mutation rate microsatellite and stable. So we don't know for sure the origin of this yet, the mutations that we see in the patients are a combination of a uh, mistake by the polymerase and whatever replication, uh, sorry, whatever repair processes are going on. So 
uh, we don't know uh, for sure uh, whether this just results in a results from a uh, uh, a, a inefficient uh, repair of this kind of mutation. However, there are some uh, early suggestions now from further work by uh, Nils and Nikki at Memorial Sloan Kettering that um, uh, different uh, mutation hotspots lead to slightly different frequencies of these mutations, uh, suggesting that it might be arising from the enzyme itself. So uh, this is then the scorecard in colorectal cancer, and um, so what this shows that uh, across our uh, microsatellite stable low mutation rate patients, of which there are 412 in colorectal cancer, only four of them have mutations in pole E. None of those are in the exonuclease domain and none at the recurrent sites. In the hypermutated, we actually get 19 mutations in the hypermutated, uh, three in the exonuclease domain, but none of those in the recurrent sites. And this suggests that these are uh, just passenger mutations resulting from uh, the hypermutated phenotype. And then in the ultramutated across the whole molecule, we have 23 mutations, which is uh, uh, more than the number of patients because there are multiple mutations per patient, 100% um, uh, in the exonuclease domain and about 80% in the uh, recurrent sites. The phenomenon looks very similar in endometrial, except that in endometrial, the frequency of microsatellite instable is higher, and, and the, the frequency of the ultramutated is correspondingly higher. But uh, we come down to very close to 80% of the um, uh, patients with uh, mutation in the recurrent sites. So this shows the, that there is actually detectable similarity between T4 phage and human pole E. These systems are, uh, uh, for DNA replication, was pretty much solved once in evolutionary history and is now recognizably similar across uh, all, uh, most species and um, uh, not only the polymerases, but the other components of the replication machinery. So this enables us to easily map the mutation locations onto a uh, X-ray crystallography structure of uh, T4 polymerase. And uh, the gray domain here is the polymerase domain. You can see the double helical DNA moving through here. Uh, this uh, purple ish is the exonuclease domain, and the red and yellow are uh, amino acids that are mutated in uh, our uh, data set. And so they're all clustering in this one area of the exonuclease domain. So uh, earlier I mentioned that there are actually two polymerases. Uh, one is pole E and the other is pole D. These have been known for decades, and over the last uh, five or six years, studies in yeast where uh, yeast origins of replication are well known have knocked out the exonuclease domain and uh, looking at the uh, skewed ratios of uh, mutation uh, arising from pole E mutants in yeast, uh, researchers have been able to show that the pole E is, uh, uh, functions on uh, replication of the leading strand. And uh, likewise, experiments with mutation in pole D show that uh, pole D functions on the lagging strand. So there's, there's this asymmetry in function of these two polymerases. So, um, there's been a recently published collection of origins of replication in human. And um, uh, so Nils uh, Weinhold looked at the mutation skewing in our polymerase E mutants, which are effectively the yeast experiment in our tumors, and 
found a 60-40 bias in CA on the leading strand, suggesting that uh, the pole E is operating on the leading strand even in humans. This would be the first time that uh, human have uh, replicated this, um, uh, this uh, what, what's known in yeast, although it's widely assumed to hold in yeast as well, uh, hold in human as well. Um, so just to remind you of this uh, high mutation rate again and cancer in the mice, these cancers uh, uh, are different from pole E and pole D uh, in the mouse. The pole E mutants lead to primarily intestinal cancers. So that kind of leads to the question, well, what about pole D in, in these cancers? Do we ever see pole D mutated? And this oncoprint from uh, the C bio portal shows that for all these pole E mutants, we never see a mutation in the nuclease domain of pole D. So this suggests that, that the pole D may be required for some essential function in these uh, 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 tumors. And uh, though we don't know what that function is yet, this uh, asymmetry is very intriguing. Uh, we've also looked at the uh, uh, rate of mutation as a function of the uh, uh, expression levels, and you can see that as expression goes up, the mutation rate goes down, suggesting that transcription-coupled repair is operating in these patients. When you look at the hypermutated, this line is flat across the expression levels. Um, and finally, um, <clears throat> We uh, are just getting the first look at progression-free survival, and Doug Levine showed this slide this morning, uh, showing that the patients that are ultra-mutated have the best prog have a better prognosis than patients that are hypermutated. Uh, similarly, in colorectal cancer, the microsatellite in stable patients are known to have a better prognosis, and so now it's become a very urgent question to find out whether this is a generalizable feature that high mutation rate leads to better prognosis. So in conclusion, the rare exonuclease mutation in poli leads to an ultra-mutator phenotype in colorectal and endometrioid tumors. The ultramutator phenotype defines a new subtype of these tumors that may have unique prognostic features and interesting biological properties. And so at this point, we're gathering with our colleagues Gordon Mills and Stan Hamilton at MD Anderson uh, cohorts of patients that will be able to test, that, that have outcomes that will be able to verify uh, what the prognosis is. The ultramutator patients exhibit a, sig a signature of transcription-coupled repair, and the absence of pole D1 mutators suggests um, uh, that it may perform an essential function in this new su subtype of colorectal and endometrial cancers. Maybe that's transcription-coupled repair, but it'll be interesting to try to figure that out. The strand-specific mutation pattern associated with putative origins of replication in humans is the first suggestive evidence for confirmation of the yeast model of replication in a higher eukaryote. And so we are now sequencing whole genome where uh, we'll be able to look uh, at more origins of replication and get out of the uh, transcribed regions where things could be biased and get a better look at at this phenomenon. So with that, I'd like to thank all my collaborators, especially Nils Winhold and Nikki Schultz at Memorial Sloan Kettering and the rest of the uh, crew at the Baylor Genome Center, uh, the Wash U Sequencing Center, who sequenced the uh, endometrial and uh, many of the colon cancers, uh, my colleagues at the Broad as well. Thank you. One question. Uh, it was very interesting fact that you didn't see pole delta mutations, but you saw pole epsilon mutations. And uh, I want to uh, bring up here the analogy with yeast. Many of your samples, uh, they actually are defective in mismatch repair, either by MLH1 or by combination of MSH2 MS, uh, or MSH3, MSH6. And it is known in yeast that pole delta proofreading deficiency in combination with mismatch repair deficiency just kills the yeast cell because of hyper extreme hypermutability. However, pole epsilon proofreading deficiency is in combination with mismatch repair deficiency is hypermutable but still can live. So that may be um, another 
uh, <coughs> factor that can be uh, included into uh, all uh, uh, considerations here. And we can talk about it later. Okay, thank you very much.